Today we are putting the Rebel Peacekeeper, Cara Dune, against Mandalorian Warrior, Bo-Katan. I will be analyzing each of these characters at their physical peaks, which will be during the Clone Wars for Bo-Katan, and obviously the Mandalorian show for Cara Dune. Bo-Katan definitely is one of the best at hand-to-hand -hand combat, which may have something to do with her vigorous Mandalorian training. She effectively and consistently shows great skill in brawls. And in the Clone Wars, she successfully subdues Ahsoka in close combat, which is a testament to her prowess as a fighter. Not only that, she seems to have a specialty for fending off multiple targets, which would require great coordination and balance to do. Although she is indeed proficient in close quarters hand-to-hand -hand combat, Bo-Katan appears to be physically small in build, which is definitely a contrast to Cara Dune's sizable physique. Bo-Katan may be skilled, but Cara Dune can mess you up just as much. Cara Dune is also highly skilled in hand-to-hand -hand combat, rivaling even Din Djarin. She often overpowers her enemies early on in the fight, giving most of her enemies a minuscule chance of fighting back. In The Mandalorian, she was on par with Din Djarin in an arm wrestling match. Din Djarin himself is a potent fighter, so that says a lot about her. She even fought in the ring for money, as shown in The Mandalorian. Her strength undeniably is her most prominent characteristic. Anyhow, both Bo-Katan and Kara are extremely well versed in hand-to-hand -hand combat, with Bo-Katan being more agile and nimble, while Cara Dune is more forceful and dominant. Bo-Katan has a slight edge in skill in terms of hand-to-hand -hand combat, but Cara Dune does balance it out with her strength and sheer power. Cara Dune has pretty generic armor, having a chest plate along with shoulder pad. Although she did have limited armor, she was mostly covered by combat suited fabric, which isn't as good as armor, but does grant increased mobility. Her main weapon is a blaster pistol, similar to Han Solo's DL-44, although she has other multiple blasters. One of her other prominent weapons is a heavy blaster which has a rapid rate of fire, but prolonged fire would most likely cause overheating in some cases, so it does have its own drawbacks. Unlike Cara Dune, Bo-Katan has full body armor made in the Mandalorian form. Her armor is likely to be at least partly Beskar, as most Mandalorians wear a couple pieces of Beskar armor, if not their entire set of armor. She also has a Z6 jetpack, which is the same jetpack that Boba Fett and Jango Fett had. Although the jetpack is mostly reliable, it can easily get damaged, even with a slight bump, and so it can cause performance issues. Not only does she have a jetpack, she also has some pretty advanced equipment, such as her combat shield, a wrist laser, and gauntlet blades installed in her arms. Overall, she seems to be extremely well equipped, especially for close quarters combat, as her combat shield could be used as a melee weapon, and not even mentioning the literal blades installed on her arms. Her main blasters are the Westar 35, which she dual wielded. It is known to be a pretty simple weapon with little required maintenance and no glaring flaws. Unfortunately for Cara Dune, she is fairly outmatched in terms of armor and equipment. Although Bogotan's blasters are not considerably better than Cara's, she still has an abundance of equipment that Cara does lack. As a Mandalorian, Bogotan was versed in blaster combat and showed the utmost amounts of discipline and dedication. Not only was she trained as a Mandalorian, she also is profoundly experienced in battle as she basically has been a warrior for her entire life. She seemed to have a very direct approach to fighting, going straight in, disregarding the odds, similar to Boba, but on an extreme level. She also seems to prefer getting into engagements up close instead of a long-range fight. Cara Dune was a member of the New Republic Shock Troops, who were especially trained to hunt the remnants of the Old Empire. She without a doubt has tons of experience to rely on. However, unlike Bo-Katan, she's only faced the usual Imperial enemies, who no doubt are less skilled than the Jedi, Sith, and Mandalorians that Bo-Katan is fighting against. Even so, she is quite shifty and creative in terms of tactics, as she did help come up with the ATST trap from the first season of The Mandalorian. 
To conclude, Bogotan would win around 60% of the time, while Cara Dune would win around 40% of the time. Although Cara and Bogotan are around even in hand-to-hand -hand combat, Bogotan frankly has far better tools at her disposal. It would be quite difficult for Kara to make up the sheer amount of firepower that Bokatan has. If you have a different verdict, please post it in the comments below and make sure to like the video. This is Entertainment Crew, signing out.